But, I mean, pivoting to another sport's number one overall pick, Dylan Cruz and the LSU Tigers obviously winning the national championship. Yeah, absolutely crazy series. So I'm watching it, and actually, unfortunately, I didn't even be able to. I wasn't even able to catch most of Game One, which was the only competitive game in the series. Worked Friday night, doesn't matter. Uh, that was the one where uh, Cade Beloso home run what was at top of the 11th. Either way, Ty Floyd 17 strikeouts. Like that was the best game Crazy. of the series. Game two, 24 to four, Florida. That's ridiculous. By the way, I saw a stat: Florida put up more runs in that game than what was it like? 43 out of the 66 career games in Florida's football program's career against LSU. So let me say it again. Let me just let me just write it out for you. LSU football and Florida football have met 66 times. 43 of the 66 times, Florida didn't score over 24 points. They scored 24 points in a baseball game in game two. So, but uh, then obviously game three, you're like, okay, well. You know, LSU won close, then Florida blew them out. Like, does Florida have the advantage? Wyatt Langford comes out with a two-run home run to start the game off as the two-hitter. And you're like, oh, okay, Florida's got this. Like, Florida, Florida's in the driver's seat. Next thing you know, LSU pours it on 18-4, to four, game three. Um, but the, the one thing that stood out to me, we talked about this last week, was the, the passion and the... Like, the intensity of college athletics is something that you just don't find everywhere. Like, I love pro athletics. I love that the skill is higher. I love that the stakes are higher. All that, right? That's great. And But I think outside of football, I could argue that college athletics is right up there with professional athletics in terms of what I would want to watch as a television product. I think the NFL is significantly better than college football. I don't think it's a debate. If you said you can watch football one day of the weekend, Saturdays, I don't. I, I will just never watch college football again. I, I don't think that's. I really don't think that's up for debate. I think NFL football is significantly better. Um, baseball, it's it's close. Now regular season, it's 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 neck and neck. But if it's regular season MLB and postseason college baseball, it's not even close. It's not. It's not even. I would watch college baseball all day long. Um, I would probably watch college basketball over NBA basketball, no matter really what time of year it is. Yeah, same. Uh, just the intensity, the passion is insane. And then in that series specifically, when you have the intensity and the passion, and then you could back it up with the talent. I mean, you got most people would say the consensus top three picks in the draft, right? Wyatt Lang for the center fielder for Florida. Dylan Cruz, the center fielder for LSU. And then, of course, Paul Skeens, the, the right-hander from LSU. There's 102 consistently, right? When you can put the passion with the amount of talent that was on that field, and you saw it on display. I mean, even Florida's, like, seven-hitter, Ty Evans, plays right field, had four home runs all year coming into the game, or coming into the, into the Men's College World Series. He's hitting, I don't know, 220. Sets the record for the most home runs in a Men's College World Series. Hits five of them. Over their course of, uh, I don't know, what like eight games in Omaha, seven games in Omaha. Um, it's wildly impressive. Like, the amount of talent, and that, and like I said, that's their seven hitter. Four home runs on the year, batting 220. Comes in, sets the record, right? Jack Caglione, who is college baseball Shohei Otani, leads the league in, or leads the entire country in home runs, 33 of them, right? Exit velos of, like, 120. And then he's also going to come on the bump and throw, like, 99. Now, granted, he had a pretty bad start in game three, but whatever. Uh, still a freak of nature, right? The town level's insane. And it begs the question, who do the Buccos take at number one? I think to me, now, I, do I like Paul Skeens a lot? Absolutely. To me, I think the safer bet is Dylan Cruz. I would probably go Dylan Cruz. I think the issue with a guy who, a hard, a hard throwing right-hander, what, like, more times than not, what's going to happen? Which, if, you, if I could tell you right now, I don't even care where he ends up at the end of his career. What will he need at some point in his career, probably before he even gets to the majors, probably before he even gets to AAA, what will he need? Crazy off speed. No, no, no. Well, I'm not even talking to his game. What will at some point he receive before he even gets to AAA? Tommy John surgery. It's almost 100%. Oh, I'm well, telling you right now, it's I almost mean, 100%. Yeah, that's the sad truth of, like, upper velos now that we're seeing. Who is the only guy that good prospect that the Pirates have drafted in the last 10 years that hasn't needed Tommy John? Garrett Cole. Gar I was going to say Garrett Cole. Tyone, yup. Keller, yup. Cool, yup. I mean, look, Glass now, yup. Like, go, go down the line. Like, almost all of them. Yeah. 
except for Garrett Cole. But uh, my point is, like, the chance that Paul Skeens, and almost of no fault of his own, like, those, those type of injuries are, are kind of crazy. What are the odds he is pitching really well, gets Tommy John, comes back, is never the same, never sees the bigs, and if he does, he's just not effective? Unfortunately, the, pretty high. The chance of that happening is much more than the chance of Dylan Cruz not being a 300 hitter. Like, the dude just rakes. Yeah. Like, he is a safer... Now, if Paul Skeens ends up being successful, doesn't get hurt, stays healthy, right? His upside is is much higher because you got a guy who's a flat-out ace, and by the time he works his way to the big leagues, he could be 104 miles an hour as a starter. That's just insane. Yeah, you can... Like, his upside is there. But Dylan Cruz's floor is, like, right there. Or like, Skeens' upside... Dylan Cruz floor. Like, it's right there. Yeah, Dylan Cruz has a, is a safer bet. I don't know. Maybe. It's going to be... So, like, there's so much talent in this draft this season. Like, this is very comparable to... What draft was it? Was it the first NFL draft that we covered where it was just talent after talent after talent? I think um, the first one we covered was Joe Burrow to, yeah, a, it was to Joe a Justin Burrow. Herbert draft. Yeah, so, like, there was, was a lot a pretty of pretty good draft, there. yeah. Um, this has to be one of the most loaded baseball drafts that I can think of in a very not, long time. I mean, those top three, that doesn't even include Max Clark, the high school prospect from Indiana. Vanderbilt commit. Nasty. There's – the problem is I'm going to miss watching these guys in college, though. That's the thing. Because then yeah. they're going to fall into the 162-game uh, schedule of the MLB. And it's just not – Well, we won't see him for another two to three years probably. Oh, right. I could argue That's if you draft – I could argue if you, if you draft Dylan Cruz – which I think the draft is like, isn't that soon, I feel like? We should know this, but whatever. Look it up. Google it. But anyway, actually, i, I got to wait to hear when the draft actually is. But I could make an argument. July 9th. So July 9th, yeah, so soon. Literally I, right before the next episode. <laughs> I could make an argument that, so July 9th, no. What kind of math is that? Yeah, the next episode is going to be the only July episode that we get before the draft. Yeah, you said that's right before the next episode. The next episode right, right before, before that. this, yes. Yeah, okay, okay, I see what you're saying. I was, hold on. Anyway, so July 9th, right? I can make the argument Dylan Cruz should be sent right to double A. I think he's that good of a hitter. I'm, I'm dead, like, for the remainder of the year. No? I think we need to see that more often. I think that's where baseball lacks a lot because I would send him right to Double A. Wouldn't hesitate. I think he he would be in my everyday center fielder in Double A. If he yeah. tears it up, I'd put him in Triple A. I swear, like I swear to God, what, what's the what's the weight? There that is a big one. league hitter in college right now. Yeah. Um, see, that's the that's the one thing. If we just want to get on that for a second too, with baseball and like the hype around the MLB draft is so low. I think because yeah. the guys that get drafted, you don't see them for such a long time. You don't see them for two to three years. Like most in most cases. In the NFL, if you're drafted in the top two to three rounds, you're going to be a starter yeah. as soon as the season starts, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, I mean... You're going to be inserted. You're going to be used in some way. 100%. You, you will play semi-significant uh, minutes. Yeah. Snaps, whatever. Yeah. And, and in baseball, you don't get that. And I think you should uh, because this talent pool is just is, it's so deep this year. I would agree. Either way, it was a great men's college World Series. Unfortunately, a couple duds there at the end with some blowouts. But nonetheless, a competitive men's college World Series, one for the ages, good for LSU. They claim their seventh title in, uh, in program history. So a uh, loaded team, good for them. Congratulations, LSU.